Hello and welcome back to part 2 of Christian Challenge 20 Questions by Brad Keane. Christ, we would have to say that all of us killed him. Um, every time we have disobeyed God, we have caused Christ to be put up on that cross. And so therefore, it would be really disingenuous of us to blame Adam for eating, for disobeying God rather, because we all have. Or to blame Judas for betraying him because we've all betrayed God. And so therefore, if it wasn't him, it could have just as easily be, been any of us. And there's my answer for that. Because this is really how he showed the expression of his love for his enemy. That, you know, all of his disciples betrayed him and lied to him. Just one did to a greater degree than another. And so, it was a part of his plan. Well, that is true. Um, it also shows how <clears throat> the sovereignty of God and shows how, um, how he uses evil for greater good, how he took upon the lies and the deception and the shameful acts and the evil and the sin and the hatred and bigotry of this world. He takes it upon himself. And he releases love, peace, forgiveness, compassion, and grace. The Bible says all men are sinners. Wasn't Christ a man? Well, the Bible also says that Christ, who knew no sin, became sin for us. So he became the curse so that that, that would become a blessing for us. So, he became sin, so we would be blessed. 15. Wars have been done in the name of Jesus Christ. Families have been divided in the name of Christ. Churches fight each other over who is true and who has the correct interpretation of the belief system. Wouldn't Satan be pleased at these results? Yes. Um, absolutely. He wants to see the Christians fight. And I have a video about what about denomination. Now, that's not to say that I can talk to somebody of a different church denomination and we can have great discussion on our understanding of the scripture. But this doesn't mean that because they were wrong about it, or I feel that they're wrong, that I'm somehow a better Christian than they are, or greater in any way absolutely not they are my brothers and sisters in christ and i love them as myself and so uh we don't hate them but there are also a lot of false cult churches that don't follow the scripture that we need to be aware of and condemn those churches for um their direct heresies but ones who on small superficial levels have a misunderstanding or emphasize one part of the scripture uh, such as emphasizing baptism or the Holy Spirit or speaking in tongues or whatever it might be um, there's nothing wrong with that He will claim to be God, and he will show signs, and he will use scripture, and he will use the name of God to deceive people. I mean, it's 
people get deceived really easily. And all people have been deceived at one point. So, yeah, I, I, I don't disagree with that. I suppose. Yeah, yeah, he could do that. Um, but, see, Satan's pride is so high that he would never humiliate himself like that. Given the nature of Satan that is revealed through the scripture. And, um, I don't think people would crucify Satan. If you notice, you can be a hypocrite, not you yourself, but, you know, if you're a hypocrite, you will have thousands of friends and you will be extremely popular. But if you live by the truth, your videos will get one star, uh, as many of my other accounts have, and you'll get 85 subscribers after being on YouTube for pff, two years. And somebody who cries about Britney Spears and telling her to and saying leave her alone, and is a gay from man from San Francisco, France San Francisco, gets billions millions of subscribers and billions of hits and a million and one comments, and all he talks about is nothing. Because they, because they knew God completely, yet chose to disobey Him. They knew Him 100% without a doubt, and chose to disobey God. He forgives us because we are kind of caught in between. We are kind of caught in the middle. Well, um, Jesus could have told Jesus told his disciples at one point what happened when he was fasting. No, he did not speak in parables to confuse people. He spoke in parables to safeguard his word, to stop imposters right away at his um, advent, at his first advent. And so he spoke in parables that was harder for people to understand. So the ones who really didn't want to hear him out and give him a chance left. And then he went to the ones who did want to hear him and explain what he meant. And also, when you read about him and Nicodemus. He's saying, okay, Nicodemus, I'm telling you the things of this world and still you don't understand and you don't believe. Imagine if I started telling you the things of heaven, how little you would understand or believe. And so he spoke in parables to help us understand on a basic level some of his teachings, which even today, I mean, these parables are amazing are absolutely amazing teachings and still apply today. And so, um, he's safeguarding his word, almost like putting a lock and key on it to those who would stick around and those who would try and use what he said against him. And so, thanks for uh, posting the 20 questions and um, have a good day. Take care, guys.